Hi everyone, today's video should be pretty self-explanatory. It's all about my experiences with hypo hypothyroidism. That's a tough one for me to say. Um, I'm going to come out with a standard disclaimer just because this is medical in nature. I'm not a doctor. I don't pretend to be a doctor. I don't play a doctor on TV. I don't play a doctor on YouTube. I'm not married to a doctor. I'm not related to a doctor, at least not by blood. And um, this is just my experience, which is not all that interesting. But I've had a lot of requests uh, to discuss this. And also I feel like it's one of those conditions or diseases that a lot of people are walking around with that don't even know they have it. So I'm just sharing my experiences with you. Hopefully this will help somebody out there. Um, and for me, this is an ongoing journey. So if you have suggestions for me, um, I am open to them. I just feel like there is so much information out there that among us that we can share. So that is that. Okay. So for those of you who do not know what your thyroid is or what hypothyroidism is, your thyroid is a gland in your neck. It's right around here, shaped kind of like a butterfly. And it is a gland that primarily releases two kinds of hormones that pretty much regulate metabolism and energy. That's the simplified version of it. Um, for people with hypothyroidism, which is the only thing I'm going to touch on here, their gland, their thyroid does not produce enough of the hormones. The hormones, I believe, are T3 and T4. Um, there are a variety of reasons for why this happens. In, I think, 80% of cases, if not more, it's because you have a disease called Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune disease that attacked the thyroid and impaired its function. You'd never know you had it. It's not like getting the flu or any other kind of illness. It's, it's just silent and deadly to your thyroid. So we think that's pretty much what I have. Um, so common symptoms. What happened to me is, oh, I wish I could tell you when this all started. It all kind of was blurred together, but I think it was around seven or eight years ago. So I was about 31, 32. And up until that point, I had enjoyed a very healthy and fast, incredibly fast metabolism. I was just blessed with the ability to eat whatever the heck I wanted, not exercise, and be ridiculously skinny. God, do I miss those days. Um, and everyone around me, including my own family, would say, one of these days it's going to catch up with you and your metabolism is going to slow down. Well, when I was about 31, 32, after I'd, my, I'd had my children at the age of 25 and 28 and still bounced right back, it was all great, um, about 31, 32 years old, I noticed I had put on about 10, 15 pounds in a, less than a year. And I had been the same weight, barring two pregnancies, since I was 12. So that was a huge increase for me. Um, hadn't changed my eating habits or my energy or anything like that. So I, I couldn't understand where this was coming from. That was the, that was the big red flag for me. Um, some other symptoms that started to creep up on me all at once were, um, I have dry skin. I've always had dry skin. It was just drier than normal. Even my eyes felt dry, like gritty. Um, headaches, got a lot of headaches, a lot of migraine headaches. Um, what else? Oh, I was lethargic. I was just tired all the time. I'd wake up tired. It didn't matter how long I slept. I'd be you know, ready to climb back into bed at 10 o'clock in the morning. And with that came sort of, I wouldn't say it was an outright depression, but just a complete apathetic attitude. Couldn't care less about anything. Didn't have the motivation or drive to do anything like get up, get dressed, finish lo just finish chores, basic everyday chores around the house, stopped cleaning the house pretty much, stopped wanting to do laundry. I mean, I would do it when it just got completely out of control, but I, I didn't care. Um, I couldn't concentrate. I felt like I had adult ADD. I just couldn't, um, I would make lists. I would forget things. I was forgetful. I was hungry all the time and I was eating more, which obviously contributed to more weight gain. I didn't really experience a great deal of hair loss. Uh, uh, some people do. Um, I may have been constipated, but to be honest, probably sharing a little too much. I've never been all that regular in that department in the first place. Um, my mother used to send me care packages in college that included suppositories. She would call and ask me, have you had a bowel movement today? I mean, really? Okay, that must be a mother thing. But, and I, just for the record, I never use the suppositories. Um, oh, cold hands and cold feet especially all the time and just a general feeling of coldness. I would be cold when everyone else is hot. Um, 
kind of a little bit of joint pain, just stiffness. Now I feel like my whole, as I'm describing these symptoms, I feel like I'm just, um, heavier periods than usual. I mean, really heavy, like frighteningly, like you think you need a blood transfusion heavy. And then the one thing that caught my husband's attention out of all of these symptoms was a complete and total lack of interest in sex. Just at that point, I thought if I never have it again, it's fine by me. Obviously, my husband did not share in that attitude. So he was the one who said, listen, this is not normal. I just chalked it up to being over the age of 30. Like, this is what happens. It finally catches up to you and your life just goes, Pfft. no. He says, you know what? You need to get a physical. This is not normal. You are the worst roommate in the world at this point. Go see a doctor. And I will admit that I should have been getting regular physicals. Um, and that is something that women, especially mothers of children, of younger children, really neglect. And that's my, my first big lecture topic here is get a regular physical. Take care of yourself. Because you know what? If mama's not healthy and happy, nobody else is going to be either. Um, you know, you're always taking your kids to the doctor. With this, most mothers I know, the slightest sniffle, cough, sneeze, we're off to urgent care. So, you know what? Take care of yourself. And so I went and I, mean, I went to the gynecologist, I did that regularly, but I never thought to also go and see a general practitioner or somebody like that. So I finally made an appointment and all they did was a routine blood test, not to test specifically for any one issue, but just because I hadn't had a cholesterol check, um, blood pressure, all that stuff. So the blood results come back and surprise, surprise, I have hypothyroidism, which I ticked every box. Um, I had, I didn't know it, but I have a family history of it. My mother had it. I think my, my father might have it. I might be mistaken in that. Sorry, dad. My brother had it, aunts, uncles, cousins, like it's everywhere in my family. So I just was oblivious and didn't know. That's a big risk factor. If it's in your family, you're probably going to get it. Um, so the blood test revealed that my, um, thyroid wasn't producing enough hormone, if any, very little, and they put me on Synthroid. Synthroid is the is a brand name version of Le, I can't say it. Levac. Le, <laughs> I'm gonna put the name of the generic somewhere in here. It's Levac. Levoxathyroid. I don't know. It's you know. Do you really need to say it out loud? No. It's one of the pharmaceutical name brand versions. Um, I will say this, and from there, it's just been an interesting ride. It takes a while for your body to start reacting to the medicine, for your hormone levels to um, balance. And usually you, after you start taking, they start going to a fairly low dose. After you are taking some form of Synthroid or the generic, um, then you come back for a six week follow up, they do another blood test, they compare it. Um, the most interesting thing was that my cholesterol level dropped 20 points, 20 or 40, I mean it was a huge drop. Um, that is another side effect of having hypothyroidism that's not treated is it does raise your cholesterol level which can ultimately you know cause heart attack or stroke so that's not good but um, most of my symptoms had cleared up somewhat I will tell you it took about two years of going back and forth it would work I would feel fine for a while and when you're fine when the medicine's working you're great there's nothing, you don't feel like there's anything wrong with you. Your body behaves the way it's supposed to. You have the energy level you need. Everything's great. But when it's not working, all the symptoms come right back and you feel like crap. So it's this constant, I feel great, now I don't. I feel great, now I don't. And so it took about two years. I was getting very frustrated. I like things done right the first time. It doesn't always happen that way in medicine. Um, finally, I decided I wasn't getting the right level of knowledge that I needed from my general practitioner. And I did some research um, online and talked to other people and found an endocrinologist. And I will say this, this is all personal opinion, but general practitioners and internists are important, but when you have a unique condition that has a specialty field, utilize it. Go find a doctor that specializes in the condition that you have. Mostly because that's all they do is deal with thyroids or deal with kidneys or deal with whatever it is that you have a problem with and they're up on the latest research usually and the latest medicines and the latest protocols and and you know I mean they specialized in your area for a reason go find one um, so when I finally went to see an endocrinologist he did do an ultrasound to confirm that I didn't have 
um, like a tumor or something causing this, which I probably should have had done immediately. And I don't, I don't have a tumor. Um, and he also tested, he did some more, I'm not going to get into all the little things, but he did do, besides the general blood panel, he did test specifically for certain levels, the, the individual hormones. Um, I was still pretty straightforward. He switched up my meds and still on Synthroid and things were pretty good for a while. Um, as far as the medication goes, I've been lucky. I've responded very well to Synthroid and for the most part, I've not really needed that much tweaking in the last five years. Um, I will tell you, it has been my experience in speaking to several endocrinologists and pharmacists that for most people, the generic form, while it is preferable because of price, doesn't really work for a lot of people. Um, I did do a, a short stint thinking, oh, I'll save a little money, and took the generic, and immediately my symptoms came back. And I called my doctor, and he said, uh, yeah, let's switch you back to Synthroid and see what happens. And then I went back on Synthroid, and everything worked great. Now here's the frustrating part about hypothyroidism. There is no one protocol that works for everyone. Some people, like I said, react great to the generic. Some people work better on Synthroid. There's another name brand of the drug called Armor. Some people don't do well on Synthroid, do great on Armor. Some people don't do well on Armor, do great. Some people, their symptoms clear up once you're on the medication and everything's great. For others, it's a constant battle. And I gotta tell you, I've recently thought that things were not right. In fact, as I'm sitting, my hands are freezing and it's 75 degrees outside and I have a headache. Um, I have been experiencing a lot of the symptoms again. I went back, I've gained some more weight. I just feel not, I was really tired. You may have noticed I hadn't been uploading as many videos lately. Just kind of the same stuff creeping back in. Went to see the doctor. He did a blood test. It all came back normal. However, been doing a little more research. I still don't feel great. Um, I would like to request some more specific blood tests. And that's my, I'm on my second lecture topic. I don't even know. Um, it's another point I want to bring up. You are your own best advocate. If you don't think something's right, it probably isn't. Do your research. You need to find a doctor that is willing to work with you. It's more of a partnership. It's not an equal partnership. You don't have a medical degree, but you know your body better than they do. So, um, I, what I really like about my doctor is if something's not right, he's open to explore other options. So I am going to be scheduling another follow-up um, checkup with lab work, and he's going to do some more specific lab tests that I am interested in him uh, performing just to kind of see what's going on. Um, there's testosterone issues you can have going on. There's T3 test, free T3, T4, reverse T3, all these things. I'm going to put a link to a, um, a blogger who has summed up and written about her experience much more, uh, much more better, much better than I can. And, um, and you can get a, she has a description of all those tests and it's a very uh, good source of information. But um, that is an important facet of getting better, is finding someone who doesn't think you're crazy and is willing to work with you to figure out what's going on. Um, and I just kind of got lucky in finding this doctor. He, when he comes in um, and he has the lab results in his hand and he'll look at me and he'll go, okay, I know what this says, but you tell me what is, what do you think it says? Because you know your body. And so sometimes I'll say, I feel great. I know it's gonna say everything's fine. And I'm, I'm always right, um, except for this last time. Uh, or I'll say, you know what, I really don't feel well. I think it's gonna tell me, it's gonna say that I'm low on my thyroid stuff, whatever. I still don't have all the terminology down. And he'll say, yep, you know, you're right. Um, so right now in my journey, I'm kind of, I, I'm feeling, my blood work is showing I'm regulated. He did suggest a few things to help me. And when I do stick with them, I do feel better. I should say that it's probably, I probably am fine. My last point that I want to talk about is you can take medication, but medication, there's no wonder pill. You have to um, do other things. So I got the lecture from my doctor about a month ago saying, um, you know, you're 40 years old and while the last 40 years you've been able to get away with not exercising and eating whatever you want, you got to stop. And I've been told I need to work out, not so much for weight loss, I mean that's what I want to do it for, but it's um, primarily also just for health. 
Um, he wants to see me doing at least three, preferably five days of cardio at 45 minutes of pop, which I have actually started doing. And you know what? Dr. V, you're right. <laughs> when I stick with, I get on the elliptical, I have an elliptical in, uh, upstairs and I, you know, turn on the Real Housewives or whatever I have on my DVR and I just go at my own pace. I don't even do the arms yet because I'm so out of shape that I couldn't. I just do my legs and I just keep going um, for about 40 minutes I can pull off without falling over dying. And it does get a little easier every time I do it, but um, he's right. Put exercising regularly, definitely my energy level went up, my attitude improved. He also wanted to see me doing um, more weight bearing, well more, anything would be more. He wanted me to start doing weight bearing exercises, especially at my age to combat osteoporosis. And I signed up for a stretching and toning class that meets twice a week. And um, we use hand weights and resistant bands and we do some Pilates moves. So you're working on balancing on your own weight. And I'm already seeing a huge difference in the way my body feels. Um, and then he ultimately said I, he'd like to see me do at least one day a week, if not more, of yoga. Um, he's a real strong believer in meditation and and the effects how that has over your whole body. And again, guy's totally right. So um, while I am gonna go back for these follow-up lab, lab work, I also know that if I just stick with this exercise program that um, I'm already feeling a little bit better. So I think that they kind of work hand in hand. Um, I think I'm looking, I wrote down a list of things so that I don't forget anything because and that's kind of it. So the high points are, if you're not feeling right, go see a doctor. In fact, go see a doctor every year whether you're feeling right or not. Trust yourself. If something's not right, it probably isn't. Go see a specialist, not just for hypothyroidism, but for any condition that you have. Uh, if you feel like you, you need to, you should exercise your right to do that. Listen to your body and um, be your own best advocate. Do your research. There's, there's just a lot out there. But, you know, be... What's the word I'm looking for? Be judicious. You know, research your research. Consider the source. You know, I'm going on the Mayo Clinic websites or WebMD. If you're going off on some random guy that's just spouting nonsense, you know, make sure that your research has some credibility to it. But um, anyway, that is my story with hypothyroidism. It's been a pretty easy journey. I can't complain. Um, my heart goes out to all of you who have been struggling with this for years. It is not easy. Um, it's not it's not a condition that gains a lot of sympathy just because you're tired people are like just sleep more eat better and you'll feel fine it doesn't work that way it's not gonna kill you I mean it will ultimately if it's really bad and it goes unchecked for probably decades but it's not gonna kill you and so you know it's not like they're having walks to raise awareness for hypothyroidism and it's not like you can wear a cool bracelet or whatever so you know it's not cancer but it is something that affects your quality of life. So I suggest if you're not feeling great, go get yourself checked out. And this might be the reason why. So if you have any questions or, like I said, any um, advice to give me, um, please feel free to put it in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.